Chapter 26. A Job for Mr Dovetail Daisy had gone to school and Mr Dovetail was busy in his workshop next morning when Major Roach knocked on the carpenter's door. Mr Dovetail knew Roach as the man who lived in his old house and who'd replaced Major Beamish as the head of the Royal Guard. The carpenter invited Roach inside but the Major declined. We've got an urgent job for you at the palace, Dovetail, he said. A shaft on the king's carriage has broken and he needs it tomorrow. Already, said Mr Dovetail. I only mended that last month. It was kicked, said Major Roach, by one of the carriage horses. Will you come? Of course, said Mr Dovetail, who was hardly likely to turn down a job from the king. So he locked up his workshop and followed Roach through the sunlit streets of the city within the city talking of this and that, until they reached the part of the royal stables where the carriages were kept. Half a dozen soldiers were loitering outside the door, and they all looked up when they saw Mr Dovetail and Major Roach approaching. One soldier had an empty flour sack in his hands, and another a length of rope. "'Good morning,' said Mr Dovetail. He made to walk past them, but before he knew what was happening, one soldier had thrown the flour sack over Mr Dovetail's head and two more had pinned his arms behind his back and tied his wrists together with rope. Mr Dovetail was a strong man. He struggled and fought, but Roach muttered in his ear, Make one sound and it'll be your daughter who pays the price. Mr Dovetail closed his mouth. He permitted the soldiers to march him inside the palace though he couldn't see where he was going. He soon guessed, because they took him down two steep flights of stairs and then on to a third, which was made of slippery stone. When he felt a chill on his flesh, he suspected that he was in the dungeon, and he knew it for sure when he heard the turning of an iron key and the clanking of bars. The soldiers threw Mr Dovetail onto the cold stone floor. Someone pulled off his hood. The surroundings were almost completely dark and at first Mr Dovetail couldn't make out anything around him. Then one of the soldiers lit a torch and Mr Dovetail found himself staring at a pair of highly polished boots. He looked up. Standing over him was a smiling Lord Spittleworth. Good morning, Dovetail, said Spittleworth. I have a little job for you. If you do it well, you'll be home with your daughter before you know it. Refuse, or do a poor job, and you'll never, ever see her again. Do we understand each other? Six soldiers and Major Roach were lined up against the cell walls, all of them holding swords. Yes, my lord, said Mr Dovetail in a low voice. I understand. Excellent, said Spittleworth. Moving aside, he revealed an enormous piece of wood, a section of a fallen tree as big as a pony. Beside the wood was a small table, bearing a set of carpenter's tools. I want you to carve me a gigantic foot dovetail, a monstrous foot with sharp razor claws. On top of the foot, I want a long handle so that a man on horseback can press the foot into soft ground to make an imprint. Do you understand your task, Carpenter? Mr Dovetail and Lord Spittleworth looked deep into each other's eyes. Of course Mr Dovetail understood exactly what was going on. He was being told to fake proof of the Ichabog's existence. What terrified Mr Dovetail was that he couldn't imagine why Spittleworth would ever let him go after he'd created the fake monster's foot, in case he talked about what he had done. Do you swear, my lord, said Mr Dovetail quietly, do you swear that if I do this, that my daughter won't be harmed, and that I'll be permitted to go home to her? Of course, Dovetail said Spittleworth lightly, already moving to the door of the cell. The quicker you complete the task, the sooner you'll see your daughter again. Now, every night we'll collect these tools from you and every morning they'll be brought back to you because we can't have prisoners keeping the means to dig themselves out, can we? Good luck, Dovetail, and work hard. I look forward to seeing my foot. 
and with that, Roach cut the bar- ropes binding Mr Dovetail's wrists and rammed the torch he was carrying into the bracket on the wall. Then Spittleworth, Roach and the other soldiers left the cell. The iron doors closed with a clang. A key turned in the lock and Mr Dovetail was left alone with the enormous piece of wood, his chisels and his knives. <laughs>